Hi, I'm Noah from Planable and welcome to our demo. Planable is a social media collaboration and scheduling tool that helps team plan, preview, approve, and publish their content. This is our main dashboard. Here you can find all of your clients or brands organized in workspaces. Each workspace holds all of the relevant content and people within it. Inside your workspace, you're going to find all of your pages in the sidebar and you'll be able to add more as needed. Here are all the social media platforms that we support and we also have a dedicated space for non-social media content called Universal Content. Here you can create a page for different channels, content types, audiences or anything else you can think of. You can imagine this is like a blank Google Doc that can become anything you need it to. Now that your pages are all set up, let's talk about users. In Planable, you can invite all of your colleagues, collaborators, clients, or any other stakeholders. When inviting them, you'll have to choose their permissions and their membership. Their permissions decide what they'll be able to do, whether that is to write content, approve it, leave feedback, and so on. Their membership talks about whether or not they'll be able to see all of your posts. Team members can see internal posts and internal notes, while clients will only be able to see the content that you deem ready for their approval. Once users are part of your workspace, you'll be able to adjust their permissions moving forward if you ever need to. Once everybody has joined your workspace, it's time to set up your approval workflow. You can do this from your workspace settings and you can choose from four different workflows. The main difference is whether or not a post can be scheduled with or without approval. For none and optional, approval is not needed and a post can be scheduled right away as it's created, whereas for required or multi-level, at least one person needs to approve a post before it can go live. Additionally, we have two important features, schedule posts automatically on approval. Enabling these means that as soon as a post is approved, it'll automatically be published at the selected date and time. And locking content after approval, enabling this means that nobody can edit a post after it's been approved. Now let's move on to creating content. To create posts, you can click on the Compose button or the C key on your keyboard. Once the Composer is open, you'll see at the top all of the pages that you have connected. And from here, you can select all the ones that are relevant. You can create a post for one page or multiple pages at a time. By selecting multiple pages, you'll notice there's a sync on option that is enabled. This allows you to duplicate your content across all three pages without having to copy paste. You'll put in your caption. You can either write it yourself or have AI help with that. And then you can attach your files. You can upload files from your computer or from the media library where you upload files in bulk or even import them from Canva. If you are using Canva, you can add Planable as an app and then easily share files between Canva and Planable. Because I have multiple pages selected, you'll notice that my content has been duplicated across all three of them exactly the same. Now, if I were to want to make small tweaks on each individual page, all you need to do is go ahead and turn the sync off. Now, any changes you make are only going to take place on that specific platform. If I were to erase this sentence, this will only be erased from Instagram, but not LinkedIn or Facebook. This is a great strategy, especially when you are tagging other accounts it's best for you to turn the sync off and then tag each account on the right platform. Also, if you're often reusing the same snippets of text, hashtags, taglines, you can create templates. This will allow you to reuse them a lot easier and make sure that the entire team can use them at once. For your assets, you can also do a lot of things in Planable like editing the images, 
adding multiple ones and reordering them, adding alternative text. For videos, you can add thumbnails or trim them. So based on the format that you're looking for, you can also slightly adjust it directly in Planable. Based on each platform, you'll be able to either add a first comment or a location, invite collaborators, tag people in the photo, and so much more. Once you're done with creating your post, you'll be able to select a date and time, either by putting choosing one from the calendar or choosing one of the predefined time slots that you can add yourself so that it's easier to choose a date and time. Afterwards, you'll be able to either schedule or save the post depending also on your approval settings. For universal content, as I mentioned in the beginning, think of it more as a Google Doc page. You'll notice you have a space to put in the title and then you have a lot more room for formatting. You can add different headings, you can add media, make lists or even checklists, add dividers and so on. For your regular post, you can also select it to apply rich formatting. You'll also find a word and character count at the bottom to help you keep track of that. After creating your posts, there are several ways in which you can preview them. First, we have the feed view. This is where you can select one page at a time and then you can scroll between all of your content. You can see the full preview and each post has its own feedback section. You can also make sure you choose how your posts are sorted, whether it is by their schedule date or created date. Next, we have the calendar view. This is where you're able to select all of the channels for a good overview of all of the upcoming content. You'll have a column for all the saved posts that don't have a date and time, and then you can switch between weeks or months depending on how you like to preview your content. To see the full post, all you have to do is click on it to get the full preview and then access to the feedback section as well. Moving on, we also have the grid view. This will be most relevant for your Instagram, allowing you to see what the grid is going to look like, but even help you design the layout that you'd like. You're able to drag and drop posts and this will change the layout. And then it is up to you to make sure you choose the right date and time. To make sure that your grid looks exactly how you want it to, go back to the filter section. The sorting will be set to custom order as you arrange them manually. And all you have to do is make sure that as you select the date and time, the last scheduled date will match the custom order. And we also have the list view. The list view is another place where you can select all of your channels and it allows you to go ahead and select multiple posts to take mock actions, whether that is to approve, schedule, duplicate your content, and so much more. If you want to be more efficient when it comes to how you're seeing your posts, you can also take advantage of our custom views feature. This allows you to select several filters and save them into a view that you can easily access. For example, here we have a to be approved view where we see only the posts that have not been approved. You can apply multiple filters, you can choose what view you see them in, feed, calendar, grid, or list view, and you can also decide whether the views are visible to everybody, just yourself, or only the team. Now let's talk about collaboration. There are three ways in which you can leave feedback in Planable. First, you have the general comment section where you can leave feedback for the entire post. You can go ahead and tag anybody in your workspace or even go ahead and attach files. If there's already a comment, you can resolve it or reply to it to keep things threaded. If you're also working with team members and clients in Planable, you can choose to make certain comments internal 
making sure that some conversations stay behind the scenes and only you and your team members will see it and clients won't have access to them. When it comes to captions, you have two additional options. You can highlight any piece of text and leave an annotation so that it's very clear that your feedback is about that exact section. But you can also take it a step further and leave suggestions, just like in Google Docs with track changes. Again, you would highlight the piece of text that you want to change and actually edit it yourself. Your teammates and the person who created a post will see the change that has been made and then be able to decide whether or not they'd like to accept it. If they do, the copy will be changed right away. Now that we're done with feedback, it's time to move on to the approval process. Users can go ahead and request approval from those who have the approval permissions. And for the approvers, once they're done with reviewing the post, if it has the green light, all they have to do is click the check mark. Once they've done that, if you've enabled the auto schedule option, you'll notice the post is automatically scheduled. The last part I want to talk about when it comes to creating content is campaigns. Campaigns are a way to organize your content even more around an event or a communication opportunity you know is coming up. When you're creating a campaign, the first thing you need to do is assign the period of time that it's going to be taking place. And then you have this place where you can put in all of the details of the campaign, any links, any objectives, and information that will be useful. You can even create checklists to make sure that everybody is aware of what needs to get done. Then you can go on and switch to the calendar view for this campaign. What this means is that here you're only seeing the content that is attached to this campaign and anytime you're creating a new post, it'll automatically be attached to it. Same goes for the media. You'll be able to see only the assets that are attached to the campaign and analytics only for the posts within the campaign. If we go back to the calendar, you'll notice the campaign is highlighted so you know when it's taking place as well as you'll be able to see any posts that are attached to it already. So you can choose whether you want to see a calendar with all of the content or one that is only focused on the campaign itself. Now that we've covered how to create content, campaigns, leave feedback and approve them, schedule and publish them, it's time to talk about analytics. In the analytics section, you'll be able to see page, post and audience insights. Before getting started, make sure to select the time period that interests you. You can select a custom one or choose from the predefined ones we offer. For the page metrics, you can select each metric to get more details and you'll also be able to see the evolution of each metric compared to the previous similar time frame. As you scroll down, you'll see your top three posts based on either views or engagement, and then you'll be able to see all of your content with all of their metrics. And the last part is the audience insights you can check out for your page. You can also go ahead and create a report. You can share a link to it or download it as a PDF. In Planable, you can also manage your engagement you'll be able to see all incoming comments to your published posts in one mini inbox. You'll be able to reply or react to comments. And if you don't want to do any of that, you can just mark it as done. If you want to take some more time before you get back to them, make sure you save it for later so you don't forget to get to it afterwards. This has been our planable tutorial and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to ask any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out. We have a support chat where you can do that. And we also have a library of help center articles that cover all of our features and workflows.